here with Davis Simanis, the director of the movie uh, Maria Silence, which we were honored to see just before. And uh, we wanted to uh, ask you a few questions about it and your work in general. Uh, so the first question is how your approach to filmmaking changed throughout your career. So you're doing the cinema quite for a while now already. Um, whether there's techniques or anything that you are doing differently today than you did back then. <laughs> yeah, def <laughs> de definitely. Um, um, my approach has changed. Like I, I'm trying to kind of give myself an, a new assignment with every film that I'm making. So basically, it means that when we started, it was more like that we we wanted to be a very kind of a narrative uh, wise, very precise, and to kind of a cover everything that we have to see in the film. Then, um, and then with every next film, it was changing because we thought like, okay, so there has to be a, some, some kind of a um, cinematic, let's say, miracle in every mm -hmm. film. And then you have to hide things and that, uh, that everything not, not, has not have to be seen in the film. Mm -hmm. So, and that, uh, this, this approach in a way uh, asks you to, to kind of every time when you make a new film to invent a specific visual character of it. Uh, and um, for example, the last film that we made, Maria's Silence, uh, um, um, we invented this new method that we are filming every scene mm -hmm. in one shot. Uh, yeah, uh, and, uh, and so you don't have cuts in the film. Well, you have cuts sometimes, Uh, but in, in many cases you have a one-shot uh, scene, so it means that uh, the actors are very present in the scene yeah. and the, all the reality has to be very precisely choreographed. Mm -hmm. and, and so that is something that we, so, so we gain uh, a certain pre feel of presence from the audience that they see that, that not, not, we, don't, we are not really emphasizing these editing elements, but we are like letting them live Uh, together with the, the actors and this approach I think it was quite interesting because it was the first time that we used something like this and again it was it was a certain assignment we kind of uh, asked ourselves how we should like make this presence more feelable and, and, and this was something we came up with. Another question is how your personal experiences and also cultural backgrounds like Latvian traditions or anything, how this uh, had an influence on the film because I mean the culture is a topic in Maria Silence, how your personal experience um, I myself, I'm, I'm very into history because I'm, uh, I, I was educated as a historian firstly and only then I moved into filmmaking. So whenever I have a chance to make a film, it, it will most probably will be something about history because I think that these grand narratives, like large narratives, they are s hidden sometime mm -hmm. in the history that we don't have them so much in our kind of a nowadays, like an everyday life. Um, and, and that is one thing that I, I'm, I'm just like uh, to make historical films. Uh, and, uh, and I think I, I know the moments of history that I, I, I want to tell about. Uh, but uh, concerning like, the Latvian culture and, and the connection to Latvia, is, of, of course, uh, I'm uh, very um, interested in in our past so basically when, whenever I'm doing a historical topic it's somehow connected with the past of Latvia or that there is a historical uh, histo history of Latvia is somehow involved but, but also um, this film is an, in a way for me was important because my own experience with um, in fact having a child mm -hmm. uh, the, My, my son is now four years old, but mm -hmm. when we started the film, he was just born. And in a way, the story about uh, Maria Leiko, who is going to Soviet Russia to retrieve her granddaughter uh, because her daughter uh, died while giving birth to the child, somehow it, it, it really felt a very relatable to me because I had myself experience with just having the child and being a, a proud father 
figure uh, at, at the point. So basically, that was one of the reasons for me, kind of, of this personal attachment to, to making this film. Mm -hmm. That's so interesting. <laughs> That's really cool. Um, yeah, another question is, uh, you're having a very unique style, especially now in Maria Silence. You're, you're, you were using quite uh, unique styles. Are there any filmmaking role models that you have? Uh, yes and no, <laughs> uh, because uh, I'm trying to be unique in my style, mm -hmm. but at the same time, of course, I have directors who I think is mm, are the most let's say they inspired me a lot and, and uh, for, for what they have done uh, from from like early like from more uh, further in the history of yeah. cinema I would say um, Robert Bresson is one of my very strong influences also also uh, um, Jean-Pierre Melville um, so French directors quite quite strongly influenced my 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 understanding of cinema. Uh, also, uh, from nowadays, I would say that there are directors who who are quite powerful in, in what they are doing. And I think that, for example, um, Carlos Regades, uh, a Mexican director, who I think is. Uh, uh, Lucrezia Martel, Argentinian uh, di director, who is very powerful in, in the way she tells her stories. But it, it is more like I, I consider them great directors, but I don't, I don't see kind of a very direct link in what they are doing and what I'm doing. Uh, but still, of course, you cannot avoid of borrowing things, you know, like whenever you see a film, you, you even 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 though you are creating a unique text with the film, so it's a kind of a unique artwork, but uh, you cannot avoid of having references that you are, you don't even know that they, you are unconscious about them being in the film, and still there are maybe stylistical elements. While making um, Maria's Silence, we, it was very, uh, for us it was very kind of a conscious decision to use some uh, German expressionist yeah. uh, references yeah. in it, but also also film noir uh, because we thought like that the film should have should happen in the dark darker uh, in a very dark moment film happens and that it has to be shown that it's always a night time and it's dark and and then there is this, this femme fatale character in the in the uh, in the middle of it so that was kind of a reference to film noir and how we perceive how how uh, how the this kind of a um, image should look like in the film. Yeah, I really loved also like the references to uh, German Expressionism and everything. Really enjoyed that. One last question. Is there anything that you would do differently in retrospect now that you have seen the movie, now that it's out? Uh, anything that you would do differently now? <laughs> I think I would, uh, I would look back sometime, sometime uh, in history, I would say, like ten years ago, I would, I would have gladly made uh, a blockbuster movie because I'm, all of my films they are more like art house, stylistically very kind of distinguishable films. So in a way, for mm, smaller audiences, um, I would have liked to, to at some point in my career to 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 have made a, a blockbuster movie which is very which is following very strict rules of how uh, a hollywood classical hollywood film would have to be made made and this is something i feel that uh, I, I think it's now it's a bit too late because i'm too much into my own films and and, and i would feel that it's, i'm losing time in making such film but still this this is something I would have done differently. I would I would make this one film, which is which would be quite different from anything else I have made. Thank you so much. It was such an interesting interview. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>